Hello, and welcome to the video where I show you how I made this rather adorable little light up Breath of the Wild shrine. So, beginning, I needed to find some clay. Now, I had this very old batch of stuff which vaguely resembled Super Sculpey Firm, but it was super revolting and dried up and vile, so I needed to use something to condition it and bring it back to a workable state. So here I am decapitating an old bottle of Sculpey Bacon Bond and rolling the clay out over and over to try and save this gross, crumbly mess. I didn't want to clog up my pasta roller, so I used an acrylic rolling pin for the extra workout. With a wooden lolly stick, I spread it around like mayonnaise until it was a crumbly and extremely sticky mess. It took... a while. But through the magic of video editing, I will spare you the pain of watching my hands fall off. So here is my conditioned and flexible sheet of usable clay, ready to go slap bang over this aluminium form that I made. Now, I should have made it smooth by compressing it, but like the bacon bond, I didn't have very much left, so I was trying to be frugal, and I ended up with a very lumpy underlayer of clay, which was really hard to work with. If I'd thought about it, and if I was feeling tough enough, I could have conditioned some ancient Sculpey light that I have, which would have made a great first layer, but I didn't. So I didn't. Here you can see me in the process of cutting away the clay for the light to shine through later using my trusty scalpel. These bits around the door look like the F holes in a violin or cello and as a violinist that made me very happy. All the holes are now cut out and it's time to jump back in time to making the pillar where Link sets his shaker slate to unlock it. Now the roll and break method with the Stanley knife let me down here, so enjoy this footage of me floundering around trying to break off a piece of dowel that is actually about 500 times bigger than it should be for a model of this scale. I address this later. At the time, I think I've won here with the pliers, but this is the moment when I find out that the scale is completely wrong. I just jab the dowel through the clay to the aluminium so that I can glue it in later, but I'm beginning to realize that there may be an issue. Using the scalpel, I help the dowel through the structure. I am clearly determined to make this work, so I use a huge, thick piece of clay around this massive pillar of dowel, certain that it will look right when I add some details. Spoilers, it didn't. Now that it's baked and cool, I went back to my dwindling pot of bacon bond and slathered it all over the base layer of the shrine, making a revoltingly sticky and completely impossible mess. It also cracked when I forced that accursed piece of dowel back in. And here I am giving the shrine an adorable little cap that I end up taking off later. Again with the bacon bond, it was such a waste and I had so little left. Here I am punching out a hole for the light well and setting it aside to mess up later. And I remove the silly cap and turn my attention back to that pillar once again. Needless to say, that doesn't last. I cast it aside and add the sort of skirt of the shrine with Super Sculpey Original and not quite enough Bacon Bond at this point. There's that dowel again. 
And now it's time to make the architrave of the shrine by rolling out some long bits of clay and smushing them gently into the front of the shrine. I also made the door with its closed off sections. This shrine is one that Link hasn't visited yet, so it's all locked up. And here I'm just using various tools to smooth it into the cured clay behind and picking out the details. I didn't have quite enough bacon bond really, but it bonds okay to itself if you're patient. I had one last go at the pillar this time around and I think it worked out okay. Now it was time to start making all the squiggles of stone on the side of the structure. I also added the chiselled and engraved details into the smooth surface of the new Sculpey, which were visible on the shrines in the game, and then I baked it. I didn't show all of the process of squiggling because it took me approximately a hundred years, but here it is now that it's completely baked. I also made the insert for the shaker symbol at the top and decided to add it in separately with more clay to avoid difficulties with mangling the soft shell of the shrine while cutting out the shapes. Adding it in was a nightmare because I only made one and I was terrified it was going to crack. So all this work with the tool is done very gingerly. Luckily, it turned out fine. Here I am blending the edges with baby oil to make sure it's as smooth as I can get it while the clay is still uncured. And taking the foil out was a terrifying nightmare again because I was so scared it was going to crack, but I managed to do it without any major issues. Now it was time to sand the join between the symbol and the rest of the shrine. My idea with this initially was to use a piece of clear plastic, hot glue it in place, and then cover it with tinted UV resin. I had done some test pieces first, and the colorant I used for my two-part epoxy uh, worked fine when curing this, uh, but it wasn't quite intense enough with the blue when I finished. So I had to use a combination of blue acrylic paint and tinted resin on the plastic to get the effect that I wanted. It took a lot of experimenting, but I now have a better idea of what will work and what won't for things like this. It looked really promising at this point though, I have to say. Time to start to cover the entire thing, uh, except for one really important bit. And you'll see what I mean later when I give myself another couple of hours worth of unnecessary grief. You can still see a bit of the blue on my brush from the resin and paint experiments, but it doesn't matter because this is just a base coat and it was really satisfying to do because it ties the whole thing together at this point. And here I am adding some sandy coloured paint that I applied way too thickly as an undercoat for these stone squiggly bits. Luckily, I didn't lose too much detail. The beady-eyed among you may notice that the light well at the front of the shrine looks a little different. We will come to that shortly. Remember when I said I had essentially shot myself in the foot when painting the base coat? Well, I covered the filigree bit with resin before I had painted it. I don't know what I was thinking, but I did, and it left some nasty pink clay encased in resin like a fly in amber, and I had no way to sort it. So I made this quite clumsy aluminium wire filigree shape and decided to set it into the slight recess. In the end, it looked pretty good, but if I could go back and do anything again, it would be this for sure. I used several coats of the Immortal Black Paint and Mod Podge mix to coat the wire and cardboard and create something that looked passable. Here you can see the base coats have been applied and I'm adding the little points of light to that blasted pillar to evoke the same glowing light as inside. Building up the layers uh, with paint that's still a bit too thick, but I was lucky and didn't lose the stone texture I'd applied to the squiggly bits with balled up aluminium foil. Now I'm adding a green wash where I'm going to put the flocking later with Mod Podge. I wasn't very careful or attentive here, just creating a mossy, algae covered look to give the impression that this shrine has been sitting here idly for hundreds of years. 
The second and third coats of black I gave the shrine had a drop of silver metallic paint in to create a kind of gunmetal feel to the shrine because in the game they're reflective but they don't quite look like stone. And I managed to splob some paint over the top layer of the shrine but I will clean that off. Now for the light well again with more UV resin to create a more unified feel. I'm using the UV resin from Green Stuff World and it works really nicely if you can get it out of the bottle. Good job I did all of that work out with the clay at the start of the project. I did it bit by bit because I wanted it all to cure and I knew that some of it would wick away once I'd added it to the filigree section. Now that the areas for flocking have been marked out and the gold added to those engraved bits, I went over the brown of the door with a lighter colour. It's not quite a dry brushing because there's far too much paint on for that, but it's the same principle. I wanted the glyphs to stand out in a darker colour. All of the various flocking was added with Mod Podge and then saturated with a mix of water and PVA to lock it in place. You can see the glowing blue and orange effects now that I've added the LEDs inside and the sparkle of the silver in the black gives it that strange not rock, not metal quality. And here it is with the workshop lights off. I wish I'd used the same effect for the light well as for the front and the sides, but I didn't realise how pale it would be at that point. And now for the final shots of the finished piece. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this came out. I haven't built a lot of dioramas like this before. The Alucard sarcophagus was the most adventurous I've got so far, but all in all, I'm happy with how it turned out. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are and if you have any suggestions on how I can improve and what you'd like to see me build next. I've got another bigger Breath of the Wild project lined up, but I haven't started it just yet, so I'm open to suggestions.